Welcome to Chapel, our leadership leading. We believe in the potential of people to shape the world for good. If you've been leading a team, a family, or a business for a week or a decade, we want to create a space where we can grow and learn together. I hope you enjoy this discussion.
is my confidence you never fail your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness i'm still in your hands this is my confidence Show me who 
casts out all fear. Your love casts out all fear. Your love casts out all fear. Let your love cast out all fear. Let your love cast out all fear. Hi church, how you doing? Welcome to chapel. Uh, we've missed you. What an incredible week it's been. So many people getting impacted at the moment, aren't they, by this Love Your Neighbour campaign. Again, I just want to give a shout out to all the volunteers that are delivering food and groceries, all those who are just ringing people, Skyping, Zooming. I know you're you feeling Zoomed out. I'm feeling kind of Zoomed out right now. Uh, but uh, I just want to say thanks for what you're doing. We really appreciate what you're doing in this season as a for us as a, as a church and the way you're reaching the community. Uh, last week, we looked at keeping the main thing the main thing and because often so often in life we can get pulled into so many different directions and miss our primary calling so we looked at the great commandment and the great commission and they're the things we're called to do as primaries as a church everything else is in flux is changing whether it's politics whether it's health whether it's uh, the eco economies I'm talking about a 35% dip in the British uh, economy uh, all this sort of information is getting pushed away, around and people are actually worried about what's most foundational to them and we live in a culture that is very uh, committed to change and fluidity as we said things are just constantly changing moving technology what's in fashion what's out of fashion and actually what people are starting to look for is the rock they're trying to find something that actually isn't changing we said that the purposes of God and never change okay some things that we do uh that are just actually in a season of time for us as a church so we will start certain programs certain events certain football clubs certain uh coffee shops all kinds of things but they're, they're kind of not the the most important they're not what's foundational to church to the church what's foundational is the purposes of god because the purposes of god never change okay so we looked at how the church is now being pushed into a, a season of house church and it takes us back to the future okay so the, the future is actually going backwards to acts 2 42 and i'll let you read that uh, in your own time but it's about worshiping together in smaller groups online at the moment in zoom probably once it gradually slows down and we can start meeting up in uh, groups of five tens twenties like i know didier said that in france now they can meet up in groups of 20 people uh what we can do is keep the purposes of the church life because if the purpose is you don't need a building for the start you need a home you need worship you need some fellowship you need teaching you need the word of god being preached you need people loving the poor loving those in need and you need people uh, evangelizing and reaching those who are who are lost so what an incredible season to take the the church back to the future because i think god is doing something incredible and we can be part of it so last week we looked at keeping the main thing the main thing things can get lost in flux so easily uh this week also we want to look at one of the ways we can keep the main thing the main thing is we need to battle for our mind we spoke about the great commandment do you remember jesus was asked by uh, uh one of the pharisees uh out of all the 630 commandments what's the most important and he says and jesus said to love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind we're doing a, the series at the moment called the battle of the mind for a reason because like, it's almost like there's been a double dip because we've had our first month or five weeks of kind of isolation and there's maybe like a forced holiday feel about it or being with our families but now there's that also that sense where a lot of people are saying they feel a sense of kind of despair and not there's a lull it's like they're in the middle of the the storm or they kind of see themselves on the seas uh, in a ship but the the wind's gone to put wind back in their sails and they feel like they're just stagnating so the battleground for this season is going to be in our minds what we what we let go through our minds what we choose to focus on is going to be so key this season so we're going to do four weeks called the battle of the mind but Proverbs says as a man thinks so he is we're taught to love the lord your, our god with our minds okay our lives would always go in the direction of our greatest thought processes but we sow a thought 
you reap an action, you sow your action, you reap your behavior, you sow your behavior, you reap your character, and you sow your character, then you reap your destiny or destination. Okay, often you hear people, there's a great myth about the mind, they'll say, oh, I did it without thinking. Someone was, do you ever think that? I, I did that without thinking. Or did you ever drive somewhere and think, I don't know how I've got here, but I've arrived. And it's the truth is, we got there because we thought about it so much. It's actually become part of our neuro neuro pathway in our mind. So we get to places like when we learn to drive. We're, we're thinking on it. We're focusing on it. Do you remember that day of relief when you got your driving license? I'm one of the ones who had a plethora. I love that word of experiences failing my driving uh, test. So if any of you failed more than four times, feeling feeling the pain right now. But we we focus and we over focus. So. Do you remember the relief when we no longer had to focus on passing our driving test and we could just drive for the first time? It was amazing. But basically, we think upon stuff and then we just do it naturally after a while. That's why it's real important to guard our minds in, in this season and not actually go through a season where we're um, just neglecting. Oh, we're on isolation. Let's just get introverted. Let's just get absorbed or self-absorbed. Uh, let's actually, I think this is a, the time to actually add discipline, discipline to our, our mind, especially as we go through maybe that lull where the wind seems like the wind's not blowing so much anymore. And we're kind of a, like a ship in the middle of the ocean waiting for the next winds to come and push us along, okay? So we've got to be able to guard our minds and it's, we got to be, I was thinking about some really practical things of how we can do it. Um, first of all, think get up early. It's really important to keep getting up early. Uh, spend time in the morning with God if you're a Christian. Start spending your your day, prioritise your day by reframing your mind. And we'll talk about that in a couple of weeks more on a Sunday about reframing. Uh, with what God is saying about you because he in a world of flux and change his purposes and what he believes about you they're not going to change um build your life on something that's a constant the other thing is just keep being present for people to listen to hear to see what they've got to say ask people how they're doing and I'll find if I say how are you doing people would say yeah fine great put the phone down but sort of dig in a bit more with your teams with your organizations if you can to say how, how are you really doing i don't know about you but i have uh, my my lulls and i have my ups sometimes i think i'm doing really great and other times i'm um, thinking no i need people around me right now I'm, I'm missing just the fellowship i'm missing that's you know we said our dna we're created for it i'm missing people's words of encouragement so you need to be honest about your teams and i think sometimes being honest Asking people to be honest starts with you being honest about how you're really feeling. One thing I liked about uh, Pastor Stan, the last senior pastor here at the church, is what we call an incarnational preacher. So he would talk to you about the battles in his marriage. He would talk to you about the challenges raising children. He would talk to you about uh, the struggles of having no money because he was an incarnational speaker. So that gave people the right to say, oh, he's not perfect. He hasn't got all his life together. And that gives the people you're leading the right to be honest about themselves. And I think that's so important for us. Start by being honest about yourself. I often say, don't I, that you know, in public speaking, one of the great things to do as soon as you start learning is tell a joke on yourself. Okay, so people don't think you're kind of up yourself. You know, often people what do they do in public speaking is they take the mickey out of someone else. They'll, but actually, the best thing to do is just tell a joke on yourself. People go, you know what? He's, he doesn't take himself too seriously, and they open up their hearts to you a bit more. And I think it's the same with the teams we lead. Don't let's not try and pretend to be these fake leaders that have got our lives all together no we don't have our lives off all together and it's not easy raising four kids in our house and sometimes i go home and my wife's like uh can you go back to work now i don't want your influence in the house right now i'm trying to bring order so we're, we're, we're on this journey with you guys working it all out um be present for people okay listen to them ask them how they're really doing write things down in the season is another important thing we're all learning lessons and actually the best lessons we learn are often when we're struggling uh, often when it's when we're struggling the most that we reach out to god and often it's when we're at a point where we've got to reinvent reinvent, come up with something new that we sort of lean into a season we'll learn something and often leadership really is about teaching people what you've learned in your times of struggle so embrace the struggles write things down be precise in what you're thinking Um, i find if i don't write an idea down a point down a song down 
maybe half a chapter of a book down, then it, it just goes, it goes, it disappears. So it's so important to get into a routine of writing. And some of you say, well, I'm not for English. I'm not very good at writing. Well, you know, join the club. I'm a very average C at English. And, uh, but you just have to build that discipline into your life because God's teaching us loads in this season and he's teaching you loads in this season. Um, don't hang around in your pajamas all day. That's a good good tip. Okay, set yourself tasks. Okay, a friend of mine was a uh, an architect, and he he his bedroom was one side of the house, and across the hall was his office. And every day he'd get up, have a shave. I remember him telling me he said, if if you go into your office in in your boxer shorts and your you know your Winnie the Pooh pajamas, you just won't perform. So he used to get up, put a full suit on, polish his shoes, and walk across the hallway into his office because he knew that was he was at a point of work. So create space in your life don't just hang around in your, in your onesie get dressed for a day of work okay uh, set a routine up okay if you haven't got a space in your house as an office or a place of work then create a point of if you can try and create a, just a small corner a small hub where you can say okay this is my thinking space this is where i'm gonna gonna get some work done where i'm gonna write some ideas some of the things that maybe even you feel God's speaking to you about for the future. Create that, that space in your home. Uh, have some stretch goals, okay? If we don't have some stretch goals, all that's going to stretch at the moment is our tummies because I think the calorie intake is probably higher at the moment than the normal the normal weeks when we're going out and about and uh, doing, our, doing our work. So create stretch goals. Have two or three things you want to achieve in a day. You can do some practical things. Uh, you can do some, it could be cooking, it could be obviously getting your exercise in every day. I'm not like Mr. Fitness, but I try to go for a a small 20 mile run every morning. No, I'm just kidding. I'd go for like a four or five mile run every day. Um, just trying to keep because obviously those that those good endorphins are then released we get a good hit of dopamine and that helps our minds okay so for those of us who are struggling and feel like with that with that shit with no wind in it at the moment okay so keep keep exercising that's good every day if you can set if you get if you're homeschooling like uh, obviously my wife's doing i'm not doing then please keep trying to put two or three hours in a day where you can get your your children off their uh, phones off their devices and get them studying i know it's, most of it's online now anyway for them okay then get them if they've got a music musical instrument playing the piano or the drums or they can use the, your pillows upstairs for drums trying to find ways to get them engaged or cooking is a really good one getting them learning new recipes i know our two two girls are really enjoying that and then also if you're leading teams in this season don't just let things go uh it's a really important that we did a session a few months ago on in chapel on feedback and we can maybe do that as a as an online one as well but you you know feedback is the breakfast of champions so reevaluate your family how's it going from week to week Reevaluate with your team, reevaluate with your organization, reevaluate what went well, what's going well, how's it working for us online. If, by the way, if you're watching this and you think we can improve areas uh, online, uh, please let us know. We would love to hear those as well. What went well, how can we improve? Okay, every week we do something, you know, we, nothing's ever perfect and nothing ever will be perfect. Good enough is good enough. But also, it's always asking the question, well, how can we tweak things to make them that little bit better? Uh, and then who will carry out the changes, okay? So just basic feedback. Who's going to put a name to who's going to make the change in your organization? It's a great season, isn't it? A great season for preparation for the future, okay? So to use it to to reflect. I was speaking to Gary Clark just um, last week with a group of leaders and he was saying this is the season for the church to also just keep your routines going, okay? Keep routines, don't get overly creative. Midweek life groups, weekend church, in a, in a, in a, in a season where everything's in flux, no one really knows what the outcome's gonna be, no one really knows when the end game's, where the end game's gonna be or when it's gonna be. It's a, it's a season for just keeping the basic disciplines of midweek and weekend worship in place. So think about your own uh, businesses or organizations. What are the basic disciplines you need to keep moving uh, in order to get you through this season and to get that wind uh, back in your back in your sails, okay? Uh, Harry S. Truman said, in reading the lives of great men, I found that the first victory 
they one was over themselves self-discipline with all of them came first okay so we have to learn the art of great self-discipline okay guys we'll be blessed have a great week i love you guys and we do miss you if you need anything then please ring the church directly or read or ring us or go to help at newlifechurch.me if you need aid groceries if you're really struggling uh, with finances at the moment i know so many of our local businessmen are we'd love to try and get you on the think tank there's a groups that meet up uh, in their business groups to think about strategies of how they can work through this season so again get help at newlifechurch.me let me pray father thank you for this incredible community we thank you for the the good that's coming out despite the crisis god i pray you give our church strength lord as we have loved ones who have lost uh people that are close to them i pray give us the wisdom to say the right thing father just sometimes give us the ability to stay present and to listen into people's uh, challenges father for this season lord god give us ears just to be able to be there for them lord and give us the strength and the courage father to get through this season in jesus name lord and i just pray that i pray there'd be a real sense of discipline of the holy spirit that helps us to uh walk through this season father and prioritize father this wouldn't be a wasted two or three months or this would be a time where actually we can find you and start going back to what's most important in our lives in jesus name amen amen well bless you church we love you uh have a great week and uh we'll see you in a few days online be blessed guys thanks for being part of today's leadership chat we want to keep adding as much value as possible to our teams each week Learning is not a one-time event or a periodic luxury. Great leaders in great companies recognize the ability to constantly learn, innovate and improve is vital to their success. Growth doesn't happen overnight. It's the force of teams working together for the common good on a weekly basis. Blessings, family.